Hey guys, it's Rachel with Be Heal Dog Training. Loretta and I are working on the place command on the remote collar today. So just wanted to show you what that looks like and if you're doing your own remote collar training, you can learn how to apply the remote collar to the place command. So all of our remote collar training we do with commands that we have first taught with leash guidance and pressure. So she has already learned the place command before. We worked on it on her leash and prong collar. And so what we've got on her now is we've got her prong collar with a leash attached and we also have her remote collar on. It's hidden under these big bloodhound ears. Um, Loretta is a six month old bloodhound. You can do e-collar training with puppies. Um, I've seen puppies as young as three months being worked on an e-collar. And all this is doing is providing information. Uh, the e-collar is a wonderful tool. It is not being used to shock the dog. This actually works like a TINS unit. So it's providing a muscle stimulation to the dog. So what we're gonna be doing today is working at Loretta's working level. And the working level is the lowest level that the dog feels on the remote. So to me, my working level is usually an eight, which means I first feel a sensation when the collar's at about an eight. To me, it feels like a tingle. Some people describe it as feeling like you're being touched or maybe even like a little twitch. It, there's no pain or discomfort at all when you're working at the working level. And so the way this works is when I give the place command, first of all, I'm gonna take a step back from what we've done with the leash work. So on a leash, we've been working on sending Loretta to place from a little bit of a distance. We've been working on our duration in place. Um, today, with the remote collar training, we're gonna start right back with me being right beside her at the pet cot, introducing the collar. We've actually done a little bit of this already, but I'm gonna start from the beginning so that you can see what it looks like. She's a little familiar with this. We've been doing it for, I think we started yesterday on doing place command on the remote. Um, but anyway, when she gets the command, I'm going to be holding the button down in a continuous setting, and that just means that she's getting a continuous muscle stimulation for the whole time that I'm holding that button down. As soon as she completes the command, I'm releasing the button. With new commands on the remote collar, you always start off at the working level. That is just an informational level that's letting the dog know when it's done something correctly and uh, when you've given your command, letting them know that they should be doing something. So how this looks is I'm gonna walk up to the pet cot, and this is place. If you're not familiar with the place command, I have other videos teaching how to start this on a leash and collar, but the idea is that all four feet have to be on the object that is placed, and in this case, it's gonna be a pet cot. So I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna say place. As soon as I even start to say place, I'm gonna turn the heater off. As soon as I even start to say place, I'm going to hold the button down, and the moment her last paw gets on the pet cot, I'm gonna release that. And so your remote collar gives immediate information and feedback to the dog when they've done something correctly. And likewise, if she steps off of place before I have given her release cue, I'm gonna immediately press that button again. So I tell people it's kind of like playing the floor is made of lava. Um, when you send them to place, and you have that stem going on the collar, then the dog is figuring out, how do I turn this thing off? Oh, when I get on the pet cot, it turns off. And every time I step off of the pet cot, I feel that pressure again. So we're using that pressure on, pressure off to teach the dog the command. That's it. So I'm gonna walk up to place. I'm gonna say, Loretta, place. Button is being held. Yes, button's released. At this point in time, um, you can give a food reward if you're just starting work with place. She and I have been doing enough training, we're kind of phasing out of the food, so I'm gonna give her food if she does something really good, like holding place for a really long time, or if I go all the way across the room, something that's a little harder for her. For now, her praise is going to be yes, maybe a pat on the head, but the big praise is the release of the button. That's what lets her know immediately that she's done it correctly. Great. And so all you're going to do is repeat this a lot. condition the dog to the collar, lots and lots and lots of repetition so that they understand. Oh, when they ask me to do something, I'm going to feel this pressure. As soon as I do the command, as soon as I complete the command, the pressure goes away. 
We've already worked on this a lot, so I'm not going to keep going on and on in the video. I'm just going to move on to the next thing. We're going to start, uh, well, the next thing would be for me to move away and come back towards her and move all around and she doesn't break place. I've got other videos that show this on how to do this with your leash work. At this point, I'm not using my remote unless she steps off place, okay? So I can step back and forth, I can talk to her, oh, Loretta, good girl. Yes, good job. And she should not step off of the mat. If she does, immediately press the button. All it's doing is giving information. It's not correcting her. It's not punishing her. But it's telling her, no, this isn't where you should be. And then either she'll step right back on herself, or if she doesn't, then I can use my leash to help guide her. And that's why we keep a leash on her at first. If she needs that little bit of guidance, remember that your remote does not tell the dog what direction they're going. It's basically just on or it's off. So you can use your leash to help give them some direction. You can use body pressure of your own. You can step towards the dog to push them away from you. You can do other things to help give them directional guidance. Right? Again, let's go. We've done a lot of work on that already. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start sending her to place, which means I'm going to stop farther back. Not yet, goofball. Come here. Good. I'm going to stop farther away from the pet pack, and then she should continue walking onto place. Again, if she doesn't do that at first, then I'll use my leash to guide her, but initially I'm not going to guide her with my leash. She is familiar with this, so if your dog is brand new to this, when you first start sending them to place, you'll walk up to the pet cat, you'll stop back here and kind of guide them forward with the leash the rest of the way. Now my collar is going to be doing what's guiding, so she'll feel that pressure, she knows that she should go onto place, if she doesn't understand, then I'll add my leash pressure and we'll move on from there. Let's go. Right up here. Good. Place. Yes. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Again, she's already done a good bit of this, so I won't spend a whole ton of time doing repetitive stuff. But if you're working on this with your dog, repeat that a lot. Great. This will be broken up into several sessions. You don't need to spend an hour doing this where, you know, you first work on getting on place and then you start sending the dog from farther away. Don't spend an hour doing this at a time. Do this in 10, 20 minute chunks and do it over a course of a few times a day or over a couple of days when you have time. But I'm just going through all of the steps here in one video, which you'll apply over a larger span of time. So now I'm going to send her from farther back. Place. Okay, so she's not responding. I have two options. Place. I can add a little bit of leash pressure. Yes, and initially that's what I'm going to do. Once she gets more conditioned to the collar, I can also do something called dialing up. No. When you dial up, Basically, you're turning the remote up until the dog responds. If they understand the collar really well and they're just not completing the command, then you slowly dial up until the dog is motivated enough to complete the command. Whether they're blowing you off or just distracted, sometimes you have to dial up a little higher on the remote. In that case, leash pressure would be the next step, but I also could start dialing up because she is familiar with this command. So right now she's at a level, a level five. Um, it could be different from your dog, don't get too stuck on numbers, but if I had to dial up, I might go to an eight and suddenly she goes, oh, right, place, I'm gonna step on place. So you may see me do that later if we need it, we'll see. Break. Do one more, we're sending her from a little further back. We're at a place. So now I'm going to try dialing up. Place. Place. Now, good. What happened there is I dialed up, and then all of a sudden she felt the remote. You probably saw her look at her neck. 
she showed me signs that she was a little confused. She forgot what we were doing. If your dog seems confused, then add your leash pressure because if you just keep dialing up and dialing up when they don't understand, it's not really fair to them. They're not going to get it. But if you dial up some, then add your leash pressure, they're going to learn over time like, oh, I wasn't doing it. The collar got higher. This is what I need to be doing. So if you see signs of confusion or your dog truly just doesn't seem to be getting it, add your leash pressure. Good girl. Break. Now, with where we are right now, and I am going to dial back down to my working level. Make sure if you dial up, you don't stay there unless you are consistently having to dial up. Then you may need to work at a higher level on the collar. I'm going to dial back down to a five. And I'm actually going to drop my leash here and let her drag it. And we're going to start working her, sending her to place without me holding the leash. That's pretty much where she is at now. Is being sent to place from a little further away from different positions around the room without me holding the leash. But if I need it, I can walk over, I can grab it and prompt her if necessary. So again, I'm back down on five. Loretta, place. Collars on. Place. Dial up. Good. No, place. Now, place. We'll get back to that in a second. Confusion. Guidance. Yes. Two things I want to make note on. As the dog is figuring out the collar, because she's still somewhat new to this, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel irritating as you start to go up. So you, a lot of dogs will scratch at the collar. Don't let them do that because you don't want the dog to think that scratching the collar stops the sensation. Completing the command is what stops the sensation. So if they start scratching at the collar, don't let go of the button. Usually I'll use my foot to kind of interrupt their foot. No, I'm not kicking the dog, but I'll use my foot to kind of interrupt that motion. Or if that's not working, I'll grab their leash and guide them over. Let go of the button when they're on place and then give my praise and my reward for that. So again, you don't want to let them think that they are controlling the collar by fidgeting with it. Completing the command is what controls it. So the second point I wanted to make if you have a moment like with that a minute ago where she's not moving and it's taking a while and you're holding down continuously with the button the whole time, keep in mind that these collars time out after 10 seconds. So kind of keep a little bit of an, a metronome in your head. Keep track of it. If you're holding the button down for what feels like a little longer period of time, let go and press it again really quickly so that it doesn't time out when you're not paying attention and then take that stem off and you don't realize the dog isn't using the stem because then it kind of mucks up the training a little bit, makes things a little less clear. Make sure you're aware of that because sometimes it'll take longer than 10 seconds for the dog to complete the command. So just very quickly let go, press that button again to reactivate your 10 seconds. Loretta, place. Collar activated, back to five. Good. Yes. Didn't have to dial up at all that time. Good job. I'm going to go ahead and food reward her for that because she had a little bit of a hesitation. Without me having to dial up, she went to place. Even though before that she was thinking, I really want to go to my crate right now. I'm kind of tired of being a YouTube star. I really just want to go sleep. She's a sleepy bloodhound. Um, so I'm going to praise her for that because she did. She made a really good decision there. Break. We'll do just a little bit more here for you. Loretta, place. Yes, still at a five. So you see how your collar will really sharpen up your obedience a lot. It makes a huge, huge difference because you have the ability to control it so precisely and because you're able to communicate with your dog so immediately. Break. Loretta, break. Good. No, we're not going back to your crate. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dial down one, and I'm going to go to a four and see if she'll respond with a four. Because sometimes you'll find, a lot of times you'll find, as you work on the collar and as you continue going, your levels will drop. The dog gets more in tune with the collar and in tune with listening to you and you can go to an even lower level. And keep in mind, this is four and five out of 100. Very, very low level stuff. I can't even feel it on myself until it's usually about an eight to a 12. So a four is very, very, very low level here.
Breath, place. No, place. Still holding the collar. I'm going to dial up a little bit. Place. A little bit of leash guidance. Good. Place. Yes. Good. So I dialed up to a six. I gave a little bit of leash pressure. Dialed up a little more to an eight once she was looking but still not moving towards place. Again, you just fidget with this as you go. Be very fluid. I don't like to ever lock this. You can lock your remote so that it stays set on a certain level. Don't lock your remotes. Be ready to be fluid and adjustable with it. Right? Oops, collar's twisted. Hold on, leash is all twisted around. Here we go. Loretta, place. Yes, good. So I'm gonna dial back down to a four again now that we've got her attention. Right? Do one more. Loretta, place. Yes. Good. Now, I really wanted to show this with her in particular. <laughs> yes, you can take a break there. I wanted to show this with her in particular because she is still figuring out the collar. She is still showing those moments of being uncertain and like, I don't want to do this right now. Don't let that deter you from doing remote collar training. Don't let that make you worried with your dog if you see that. They're not going to hate the collar. They're not going to be afraid of the collar. They're not going to be afraid of you or of the pet cot or of training. She's a puppy. She's just trying to figure stuff out. She's trying to learn the stuff. It's a lot. We keep our training sessions usually very short. This is about the limit of what we do on our training sessions. And, um, but this is what it looks like kind of as they're figuring out how this works. It becomes really no big deal. It just becomes an everyday part of her life. She's, she's not concerned about it. My own dogs, if they hear the buckle on the e-collar rattle because I've picked them up in another room, they come running. They love their e-collars. They know it means they get to go work or they get to go play. So. It's a really wonderful tool because it just communicates so effectively. Don't let little moments of the dog acting somewhat nervous or trying to, in her case, trying to go to her crate. Don't let that worry you. If anything, maybe dial down on your collar a little bit like you saw me do with her. Dial down just a touch if you think they're getting a little overwhelmed. And vice versa, if you think the dog is getting underwhelmed, like you saw when she was sitting there looking around, not listening to the place, dial up a little bit and get their attention. That's what it looks like as they're learning place, but also as they're learning the collar. And you apply the collar the same way to all of your, your obedience commands. We'll have other videos coming up showing you that soon. But enjoy your remote collar training. It's really, really awesome stuff. You get really amazing results from your dog. If you've got questions, if you want more help with this, feel free to contact me at BeHealedDogTraining@gmail.com. You can contact me on our Facebook page, the Be Healed Dog Training Facebook page and uh, send me your questions or uh, contact us if we can help you train your own dog.